He says Tawheed, it is the foundation that we have, it is to be followed and it is the obligation that we put first and foremost in our life. And he says it is enough for us to have Tawheed when we lack all other things. He continues by saying on this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that Islam was perfected. On that day to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu akmaltu lakum deenakum. On that day your religion was made perfect and his seal of approval was given to us as a nation of faith from that day till the day of judgment and he has become pleased that we follow the way of Islam to lead us to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam in its very basic essence is simple these five pillars of a shahadatan la ilaha illallah muhammadan rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it teaches you the importance of Allah in your life coming to identify him through asma'ihi wa sifatih that he is the Lord, he is the one who is worshipped, he is the creator and governor and therefore the only one who deserves our love and our attention in worship and in all matters of life. He continues by saying we're asked for the five prayers and to perform the zakah and to uh, fast in the month of Ramadan and to perform the hajj when we are able. All of this is to further mankind spiritually and morally. And each of these things that are pillars of Islam have a root that is founded in the Quran. And as such, he quotes to us verses in the Quran regarding prayer, that it restricts one from falling into, into sin. Tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. He tells us, Khud min amwalihim, Allah says in the Quran, take from their wealth that which will purify them when they give in zakah. He tells us about fasting, la'allahum yattaqoon. Perhaps by 30 days, after, in, after their fast, they will come to a higher level of taqwa. And hajj, la rafatha wa la fusuqa wa la jidala fil hajj. You go perform that pilgrimage and you restrict yourself and you fulfill your obligations to Allah. You hold your tongue, you hold your anger, you hold all of your deeds and you control your lust even with your spouse out of your love and your obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the authentic hadith narrated by Imam Bukhari in Adab al-Mufrad, he quotes to us the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, I was sent to perfect the characters that people have with one another, to make perfect the etiquette and the, the character that we use in our dealings with each other. He also quotes to us that Islam is not simply rules, it's not just simply things that we do, but they are qiyam, foundational principles that govern our life. They are governing principles that govern our morality and our spirituality in leading ourselves to Allah. Allah created us subhanahu wa ta'ala with the aim that we come together and know one another. In our different colors, shapes and sizes, Allah says to us, Ya ayyuha nas inna khalaqnakum. We created you from a single man and woman. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ And we made you into different tribes and different people that you come back together to learn about one another and to recognize that the best of you before Allah is the one who has the greatest taqwa, the greatest piety before him. He also mentions to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us ummatan wasata, a nation that follows that middle path, that middle road. Al-Imam al-Shatibi rahimahullah, he says to us in his book of principles about Islam, that this sharia ah and this path of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is to attain a level of correct maslaha, that all matters are made perfect. There is no deficiencies in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim also says, Sharia ah is rahmah, it is a mercy. All of it, in all of its entirety. It is adl, it is justice, in all of its entirety. It is clemency, in all of its entirety. In every part of Islam and the laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, it is a way that Allah makes right our life. And he continues with the quote from Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim by saying, anything that is not compatible with the truth of Sharia ah is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore justice, mercy, clemency, dialogue, debate, articulation, joining with others, although we have varying positions, to come to the truth is a part of Islam and one of its great aims. Such is the true faith of the believer. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to this manhaj, this way and methodology of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tawheed is the message of Islam. It is the worship of Allah that changes our character for the better. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to us in the Quran that whenever he sent a messenger, 
You have that one God who is worthy of worship, none for you to worship but his, Him. Islam calls to unity as a part of Tawheed. It calls to togetherness and unifying upon the truth. And this is something that Allah mentions to us in Surah Al Imran. Hold on together, jointly, each and every one of you, to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And do not have dissension or disperse without proper and due cause or duress. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that a primary aim as a part of our relationship with Him. He says to us as well, and another aim of Islam is to have al-aman, safety and security and comfort that people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises those وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Allah has made a promise to those who believe and work righteous deeds لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ He shall give them inheritance of the earth كَمَا استخلف, uh, As He has given it to those who came before them وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ And He shall make easy their way of life in His worship of Him and He shall give them security after they had known hardship, discomfort and terror. And that is a, a verse from Surah An-Nur. Also Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Ibrahim's dua, he says, Rabbi ja'alni, make me and my children uh, live in this valley amina, in a place of security. That dua for Mecca al-Mukarrama and these holy lands. Inshallah. Uh, it, it is a da'wah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Insha'Allah. And not to, and not to um, have dissension with people. Also security is very important. It is in fact more important than food and drink. And we call people to this as has been mentioned to us in, uh, in the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made for the people of Mecca that they would not go hungry and not go thirsty and gave them peace and security. So we call you to that noble aim, to the preservation of life, to the preservation of wealth, to the preservation of honor and chastity, to the preservation of intellect. Islam has always called to this path, the path of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Uh, the Shaykh also gives us, and we are drawing clothing uh, to a conclusion inshaAllah, he tells us the examples of the Prophet in how he granted peace and security to others was very significant. He mentioned to us the Prophet ﷺ would show kindness even to people of all the various faiths and all of the, even those who had opposed him ﷺ. Umar ibn Khattab anhu had a, a, a monthly a payment that would go out to a man who was old in age from the people of the book uh, and, and so on. Also, terrorism, extremism, violence, harshness are not from the way of Islam. Islam is the religion of salam, of peace. Allah is a salam. He is the source of peace. He calls us to Darus Salam. He calls us to the abode of peace. And Al Jannah is the uh, Darus Salam. And therefore, a Muslim's whole existence is to spread peace in the way of truth. And in this country, the Shaykh calls you that we seek that Islam calls to peace in through proper dialogue and in correct capacities according to the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I will conclude with the final words of the Shaykh of Advice. Uh, I've been asked to fast forward it a little bit inshallah. The Shaykh, he concludes by saying, I ask you and I invite you to call to Allah to be from those who call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who lead others to Allah azza wa jal. In this dunya, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if Allah was to use you to lead someone to Him, that they submit to Him, that is better for you than all of the world and all that is in it. He says, let, let you have preparation for your children to have love for the Arabic language, for the Quran and for all of the teachings of Al-Islam. He concluded with his dua that you and I said Ameen to. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the dua of the Shaykh for ourselves and you and to make his stay with us a stay of, of love and accommodation. Barakallahu feekum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair. We'd like to thank the Shaykh for his attendance. Barakallahu lahu fi ilmihi wa umrih. And inshallah just a quick reminder.